Thank you for tuning in to HR Revivals, where it's always the hour for revival. I'm your brother in the Lord, Brother HR, and it's always the hour for revival. Glory, hallelujah, Father. I just thank you for tonight. I thank you for those who have ears to hear and hearts to receive, Father God. I thank you that you're going to pour out upon them a new measure of your spirit. Father God, I thank you that your glory is going to shine upon them and that their faith in you will rise up in Jesus' mighty name. May they take their place in the kingdom, in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank God for everybody tuning in. I'm going to wait a minute or two here. I'm actually going to plug my phone in while I preach. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. Now, if you got your Bibles, turn with me to the book of Genesis, the 12th chapter, verse 1. Now the Lord had said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And I will bless them that blesseth thee, and I will curse him that curseth thee. Are you hearing me? Let's keep tracking. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So, he, the, and he said, and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Now, it's interesting. We got to we got to do a little tracking here. Amen. Praise the Lord. Abraham is at this point a Gentile, and he goes off in search of a land whose city and builder is God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Holy Ghost. He left 2,000 deities to follow God. His family was idle as they come. They were into all kinds of idol worship. They were doing all kinds of idol things. And God says, you're a Gentile. I'm going to make you a Jew. And then you're going to go back and bless the Gentiles. Watch this. Because he said, I will make your name great and you'll be the father of many nations. He says, and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. He said, this blessing and my covenant is not just going to affect you. It's going to affect the future and those to come in the future, both the Jew and the Gentile. He was promising them they're going to be blessed. He said, but you're going to be mine. I've got a Laodicea in mind. I got the called out ones in mind. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. So he was with a Gentile family, but God wanted him separated from them. Now check this out. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. So Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken unto him, and Lot went with him, and Abram was seventy and five years old. I may have said Abraham, but I meant Abram, y'all. Sorry about that. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. But he said, So Abram departed as the Lord had spoken unto him, and Lot went with him, and Abram was seventy-five years old when he departed out of Haran. 75 years old. But notice this. God told him, leave your family, leave your kindred and your tongue here. And you go to the land that I'm going to show you. Now, what did he do? He left, but he took Lot with him. And we go ahead and we read on in the story. 
later on in a few more chapters, Lot keeps getting in trouble and Abram keeps pulling him out. He wouldn't have had to pull him out of trouble. He wouldn't have had that, that way down. He wouldn't have had that delayed blessing if he would have obeyed and kept Lot away from him. Because Lot kept getting into a lot of trouble. But the Bible said that God spoke to Abram, the Abraham at, at that time, after Lot had departed from him. God spoke to Abraham and he reconfirmed his covenant promise with Abraham. He made it, I shout out about Koshe. He made it with him under the name Abram. But when he said, I'm going to change your name, he reinitiated the covenant. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Job said, I knew God, but now I know God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Holy Ghost. There's a difference between knowing of him and knowing him in a personal relationship. Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. When God first made the covenant with Abram, he was just starting out. He didn't really know the Lord like he began to know him. God bless you, Sister Cheryl. Joel, God bless you. Mike, God bless you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. But God told him, he said, leave Lot. Leave all your family. And follow me. He said, don't let the paganism go with you. When God moves you from one place into his presence, he said, leave the paganism behind. Leave the things that you know is not glorifying to my name behind. But then, what does Lot do? He says, well, Lot, Lot's my brother's son, so I... I got to take him with me. I'm 75 years old, but I still got to take care of my family. And he takes Lot with him. What happens? He keeps getting in trouble. Lot does. And Abram keeps having to bail him out. Now God's changed the name from Abram to Abraham. And Abraham says, whatever you want, I'm going to give you half of it. Just go ahead and live the way you want, because he said, I can't keep bailing you out, basically. He was saying, I can't keep showing you grace over the same situation. He said, you've got to grow up, boy. He's in his 90s now, almost. He's in his 90s almost at that time. And Lot still acting like a little teenage brat. And he said, I love you, but Lot got to go right now. You got to let Lot go. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Then when Lot leaves Abram, Abraham now, when Lot leaves him, God speaks. Once Lot got out of the way, and once the word was established and obeyed that God had given him, leave your family and kindred. Once he done that, then the father speaks to Abraham. He said, look northward, eastward, southward, west. He gives a compass. He said, north, south, east, west. He said, look at, at these directions. And he said, all of this is yours. And your descendants will be as the sands of the earth. I want to deal with something, though, a little bit deeper than just this. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Turn with me now to the book of Acts, chapter 7, verses 1 through 3. See, when you read... Genesis 12 and 1, 
You don't have a clear, deep understanding about what you're reading. But there's a prophet of God, an apostle of the church, that knew exactly what had happened because the Holy Ghost shared it with him. Praise the Lord. And I believe even the rabbis taught it, that it had happened. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Then said the high priest, Acts 7 and 1, then said the high priest, are these things so, verse 2, and he said, men, brethren, and fathers, hearken. He said, listen to what I'm saying to you. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. He said, men, brethren, and fathers, hearken. Listen. Then the God of glory appeared unto our father Abraham when he was in Mesopotamia before he dwelt in Charon. And said unto him, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and come into the land that I will show thee. So you see in Genesis that God spoke to him. You, you think when you read it that God just spoke to him. He received more than just a message. He received the messenger who is both word and image of the word. Because he said the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. 2,000 deities to follow one. He wouldn't have just moved from just hearing. He received the ultimate visitation of God. Jesus Christ, the pre-incarnated Lord, came and prophesied to Abram and then later re confirmed his covenant with Abram. Amen. Praise the Lord, who was now Abraham. He changed him from what he knew in God to now knowing God. Abram knew God. He had a knowledge of the living God because God appeared to him. But now he's been walking with him for some time. So God said, I'm going to change your name. Your name's no longer going to be Abram. It's going to be Abraham. Now, it's interesting. The rabbis teach when God changed his name and his wife's name, Sarah, to Sarah, that God used the Va in his name. Va. Yud He Vad He. And it makes a sound. It makes a breath. The Ruach. A sound like <gasps> you'd hey vod hey, and God breathed His name. Are you hearing me? Are you tracking with me? Praise the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. He breathed into Abraham. He made him a new creature. He made him a new creation because the Bible said. Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him whew, for righteousness' sake. He believed God, and the miracle was his. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Amen. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Let's go to Luke, the 14th chapter. In verse 26, amen, praise the Lord, hallelujah, Jesus, amen. In the name of the message, by the way, if you didn't know, hey, hey, uh, brother, hallelujah, good to see you on here, Doby, good to see you on here, brother Doby, I got it right now, amen. <laughs> Luke, the 14th chapter, verse 26, Luke the 14th chapter, thank you, Holy Ghost, verse 26. 
Now listen to this. I actually got a verse 25. The cost of discipleship is what it says. Joy, thank you so much. God bless you. I'm glad you like my preaching. That really blesses me. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. He said, For I say unto thee, went, and there went, he, he said, And there went a great multitude with him. Sorry, y'all, I ain't got my glasses. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And he turned and said unto them, Now, this is the cause for discipleship. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. If any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and the children and children and brethren and sisters, yea, and his own life, also he cannot be my disciple. What is he saying? The word hate here. He's talking about if you love everybody around you and everything around you more than you love him and you say, I won't go lest they go, then God says you just stay where you are. If you ain't willing to go with God, if you ain't willing to go in God, you ain't willing to go with God. Woohoo! Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Amen. See, the Bible says that Peter said, I'll go with you, Lord, to prison and even unto death. I'll go with you. But when death came calling, Peter started running. What happened, though? Once the resurrection took place and the Holy Ghost boldness came into Peter, Jesus said, this is what's going to happen to you, Peter. He said, you are going to die for me. You're going to go to prison and you're going to die for me. And he tells how Peter's going to die. And he looks over at John and said, well, what about John? He, he, got, he was self-centered a lot, Peter was. And he looked over and said, well, what about John? You just prophesied how I'm going to meet my end. And Jesus gives him a rebuke and says, hey, Krista, he said, if I let him live to see my coming, what's that to you? You follow me. He said, you said you would follow me even unto death. He said, I'm holding you to that. See, in Revelation, he said, they follow the Lamb of God. He said, these, these people that are set aside, the Laodicea, the people of God, the called out ones. He said, they overcome the devil by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they love not their life unto death. If you love your life so much that you're not willing to lay it down for the one that laid down his life for you, then you're really not following Jesus. See, Jesus said, don't fear man who can destroy the body and after that do no more, but rather fear God who can destroy both body and soul in Sheol and hell. He said, don't fear man who can destroy this physical body and after that do no more. I'm not afraid of man. I'm afraid of God. I fear the Lord. And what I mean by that is uh, I don't do this and all that other stuff. What does it mean? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. To reverence him. To respect his name. To honor his name. That's the fear of the Lord, and that's the beginning of wisdom. To know that He is all-powerful, and without Him, you are totally helpless. But with Him, you have all power in you because He lives within you. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. It's interesting. Everybody He prophesied through, in the Old Testament, everybody who was publicly called by God to be their rep his representative on earth 
when they received the invitation to stand in the council of Almighty God and be his prophet. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Jesus. Amen. He always said, Son of Man, prophesy this. Son of Man, Son of Man, Son of Man. We read that all through the Old Testament. Son of Man, Son of Man. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Son of Man means totally human one. To be totally human. Jesus identified as being human as well as God. He identified with the Father, and he identified himself as God in the Word several, several, several times. He identified himself as both Word and image of the Word. He identified himself as God, never separating divinity from humanity. See, it's interesting, whenever God would call somebody from the Old Testament, he would say, Son of man or human one, prophesy this. He was reminding, hey, shout out about Kosha. He was reminding them just because you prophesy from me don't mean you're God, it means I'm using you. Just remember, hallelujah, you're still flesh and blood. Before he'd use them, he'd put them in a place of humility to say, hey, I got a word for you that I'm going to speak through you, but just remember, it's not you, it's me, and you're totally human. Whew. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. He said, you're totally relying on me. He said, this is not your glory, it's my glory. It's not your story, it's my story. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Look at the word. It said that he is a present help in time of need. But look at the word present, will you? He is a present help in time of need. But look at the word present. It looks like pre-sent. He has already sent himself into your tomorrow today. So whatever you're facing tomorrow, it ain't took God by surprise. He was there today. And he said that he's a present help. In time of need. He's already got tomorrow's answer today before tomorrow's question even comes. Oh, Rabbi Shakarabosha. Help me, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. He put himself in your situation before you ever got there. Oh, I wish somebody would share this message today. Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Well, I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. I remember one person came up to Jesus and said, Well, Lord, let me go and bury my father and my mother. And he said, I'll, I'll go and follow you after I bury them. He said, You follow me now. He said, Let the dead bury the dead. He said, I'm calling you to life. He said, I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, I didn't know I was going to get to preaching like this. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Amen. I got one more scripture and I'm done. Thank you, Jesus. Matthew 12 and 50. Are y'all getting blessed so far? You're getting blessed, somebody share the message and say, thank you, Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. 
One day they're going to miss this crazy preacher on Facebook. I guarantee you, when the Lord calls me home, they're going to be like, Lord, I wish he could have stayed a little bit longer, but <laughs> it's all right. When I go to heaven, I know where I'm going. When I go from this world, I know where I'm going. And that's good enough for me right there, and I love it. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Matthew 12 and 50. You know what? No prophet, no pastor, no evangelist in the times of the days of old was recognized as God's prophet. One of his was thrown in a common grave. Another one was split in two pieces. But after his death, everybody said, oh, the prophet Elisha or the the prophet Ezekiel, the great prophet, the great prophet. They didn't even care to bury him in a grave. Just threw him in a common cave. But after they were dead, they were great. Their ancestors slaughtered them. But yet they honored the ones that their ancestors cursed, they blessed. Ooh, come on now. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Matthew 12 and 50. Amen. If you got your Bibles, turn with me. Matthew 12 and 50. Praise the Lord. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. For whosoever shall do the will of my Father, which is in heaven, the same as my brother, my sister, and my mother. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus is my elder brother. Are you, are you hearing me? Jesus is your elder brother if you're following him. But wait a minute. When people see you, do they see the family resemblance in you. Oh, glory to God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Do they see the people you're hanging out with that look like family now? Or do they see the family resemblance of God the Father through His precious Son and the power of His Holy Ghost? Do they see them in you when they Look at you, do they see the Trinity of God in you? Because he's living in his people. Amen, the great I am, that's right. I'm not great, but he is. Amen, the great I am is what he is. He's the great I am. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Jesus came in full divinity, full God, glory, God in flesh. He identified with fallen humanity. He ascended back to the Father. And he said, but I'm not going to leave you comfortless. I'm going to send you my Holy Spirit. And he said, he's just like me. If you want to get to know Jesus, you got to get to know the Holy Ghost. He's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. Whoo, hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Amen. See, he said, those that come to me, I'll by no means cast away. I'll, I'll, I'll not turn them away. But he said... You can only come to me if the Spirit draws you. Is the Holy Ghost drawing you today? Or tonight? Do you feel the comforter? Do you feel the, the tugger of your soul tugging at you? If you do, it's time for you to pray this prayer. Dear Jesus, I come to you a sinner. I repent of my sins. I turn from them. I choose to turn from them. And I choose to follow you, Lord Jesus. 
I let go of every spirit of offense and I forgive everyone that's ever offended me, Father. Father, I ask you to fill me with your Holy Ghost that I might make heaven my home. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen, and amen. Praise the Lord. Like I said, the name of the message is hallelujah. Go where he sends you. If he tells you to go, leave everything else, leave everyone else behind. If they won't go with you, let them be. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, if you prayed the prayer of salvation, if you ask God to forgive you of your sins and you ask Him to come into your heart, write me, Our Full Revival, at yahoo.com. I want to celebrate with you. I want to send you out a certificate of sonship in the precious, mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. Now, if you're lost, uh, you, you just prayed the prayer, so you ain't lost no more. If, you, uh, <laughs> if you're sick in your body, I curse every devil of sickness. I command a creative miracle from the body part rooms in heaven. Right now, in the name of Jesus, by his stripes you are healed. In the name of Jesus, amen. Praise the Lord. I command every issue in the tissue to be healed. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now if you're bound up, I curse every devil of bondage. I command it to loose you and let you go free. I command it to turn you loose, I said, and let you go free. Come up and out of them. They don't belong to you. They belong to God. Satan, take your hands off of God's property in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen, amen, and amen. Praise the Lord. Finally, if you have never been baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire, Jesus is the baptizer in the Holy Ghost and fire. And out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. In Jesus' name, do it, Holy Ghost. Jesus, if y'all just turn it in, Jesus is the baptizer in the Holy Ghost and fire. And out of your belly, I said, will flow rivers of living water. God wants to bring living water inside your thirsty soul. Do it now, Holy Ghost, in Jesus' name. Lord, do it, Father. Fire. Fire. Fire, 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 fire. Wash into the water of the word. I do that prophetically in the name of Jesus. Amen, amen, and amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I do love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, if you would like to give to the ministry to support us, you can do so by going to Cash App and typing in hashtag Our Full Revival. Your love gifts, large or small, keep helping us bring the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ around the world, not just here, but abroad as well. I love you. God bless you. See you in the next meeting in the air in heaven. If you'd like to get a copy of my book, McFearin, praise the Lord. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Go online wherever books are sold and type in my name, Henry Robert Kidd. Amen. Your love gives large or small. Keep helping us bring the gospel. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. People are being saved. So many have come to faith in Jesus Christ after reading this book, McFerrin. This is actually being used in 
they're, they're uh, doing it in Christian book groups and stuff like that now, I found out. So people are being saved. So get your copy. Christmas is coming up. Get your copy. It's only $10 online. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Amen. So, um, like I said, that's the way you can give or through uh, PayPal you can do it. Hey, Apostle Donald, God bless you. I love you, man of God. Bless the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, or you can give through uh, PayPal on Facebook, y'all. Praise the Lord by clicking Give in Messenger. Amen. Praise the Lord. I love y'all. God bless you. Like, share, subscribe. Hit the bell notification on YouTube for more videos just like this. I love y'all. God bless and good night. You're welcome, Joy. Good night. God bless you. Amen. And remember, thank you for tuning in to HR Revivals, where it's always the hour for revival. I am your brother in the Lord, Brother HR, and it's always the hour for revival. Amen. I love you. God bless you. Bye-bye. Yeah, I know it's getting dark in here. It, I, I preached outside my car, and now the, the lights actually are not working in my car. That's a little crazy. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. But I love y'all. God bless you. I'll see you in the next. Now it comes on. I'll see y'all in the next meeting in the air in heaven. I love you. God bless. Bye-bye. <laughs>